The headlines. Senior Republicans condemn the unprecedented search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. The White House insists it only learned of the FBI's action from media reports. The UN says there's growing evidence in Myanmar of crimes against humanity committed by the army since it seized power in a coup last year. The heaviest rainfall in 80 years leave homes and roads submerged in floodwaters in the South Korean capital, Seoul. France is in the grip of its worst drought on record, with crops at risk as the water runs out. This is the middle of the Loire River, but you can see how barren it's become. Locals say that the water has never been so low at this time of the year. And the iconic Japanese fashion designer Issei Miyake has died at the age of 84. His innovative collections earned him global acclaim for breaking the boundaries between East and West. Kenya, where vote counting is underway, where a new president is being chosen to succeed Uhuru Kenyatta. Polling day was largely peaceful. However, voting was suspended in one constituency in the volatile northern region. Kenyans are eagerly waiting to find out if the next leader is the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga or the Vice President William Ruto. Russia has played down a series of explosions at a military airfield on the Crimean Peninsula, which it annexed from Ukraine in 2014. Footage filmed nearby shows a fireball and huge plumes of dark smoke rising into the sky near the Saki Air Base. The Russian Defense Ministry said munitions had exploded in a store and denied that the airfield had come under attack. Police in New Mexico say they have detained the main suspect in the killings of four Muslim men in the state's biggest city, Albuquerque. The suspect was the driver of a vehicle they had tracked down as part of their investigation into the deaths, the latest of which took place on Friday. Two other men have been killed in the past fortnight. The fourth died last November. In what's thought to be one of the largest ever dog rescue efforts in the U.S., homes are being sought for 4,000 beagles that had been bred for drug experiments. Animal rescue organizations are removing the dogs from a Virginia facility that's being closed down for animal welfare violations. Murder, torture, and sexual violence with women and children targeted. That's what a new report from the UN says is happening in Myanmar since the army seized power in a coup last year. UN investigators say they've gathered growing evidence of crimes against humanity there and are calling the abuses a systematic attack against a civilian population. Let me just remind you where we are with this story. In February last year, the country's military seized power, ousted the civilian government and arrested its de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. A state of emergency was declared. Six months later, the junta tightened its grip as Min Ong Lang appointed himself prime minister of a caretaker government and repeated a pledge to hold elections by 2023. Since then, opposition and protests have been brutally crushed. According to local monitoring groups, more than 2,000 people have been killed and 15,000 arrested. At the beginning of this month, approval was given to extend the state of emergency for a further six months, which came as the UN gathered evidence of crimes against humanity. Also in the program, the dramatic effect climate change is having on migration patterns in the Pacific Rim. We investigate in the latest climate critical report. And the prolonged summer heat wave we've seen has uh, also seen many Europeans forced to move because of the extreme temperatures, the forest fires and the water shortages. Now, for most of them, this climate migration, as it's called, is very temporary. They wait to go back home again. Elsewhere, though, climate migration has been a way of life for decades now. Let's just take the Pacific region, where ever more intense cyclones are wiping out houses and livelihoods. This is a UN Commission cartoon just laying out the way it works for so many islanders, some of whom then head off to other countries for work to support their own families and also in the hope of rebuilding their lives. Um, but that migration often leaves them exposed and after dominating women's tennis for a quarter of a century 23-time grand slam champion serena williams suggests she is planning to retire <laughs>